Occupy Flagstaff House, Red Friday, and now Ghanaians living in the U.S. are threatening to occupy the Ghana Embassy in Washington, D.C. to call on government to deliver on its promises. But is it just a cry from the middle class or a mere exaggeration to make the government look bad? Are Ghanaians like Oliver Twist asking for more? We've become a nation of pessimists. Every day we are bombarded with everything that is wrong with our nation. Never with what we are doing right. It creates a national psyche that believes that no matter how we try or whatever we do, we cannot make our lives better. Perhaps the government promised more than it should. Is it a Guinean nature to, as it were, lose hope or are things really that bad? My name is Prince Minka and this is today's big story. Ghanaians resident in the United States of America are planning a peaceful demonstration dubbed Occupy Ghana Embassy at D.C. to protest what they call poor governance, corruption, and the general decline of the country's economy. Well, the demonstration is slated for Wednesday, July 23, 2014. And the demonstration is being organized by a U.S.-based pressure group called Ghanaians Against Bad Governance. And it is under the general theme, Stop the Decline Now. Well, you know, on July 1, 2014, some Ghanaians demonstrated under similar concerns. Now, is, it, or is this not a mere duplication of concerns? And what will such a protest achieve? On the line now is Charles Akolache, a member of the legal team, Occupy Ghana Embassy, uh, D.C. And he's on the line from the United States of America. Good evening to you, Charles, and welcome to the program. Good evening, and thank you. Now, you are in the U.S. Do you really feel the economic pinch directly that you'd want to go on a demonstration? Yes, of course. Uh, we are in the U.S., but we still have our uh, family, our friends, and relatives, and loved ones at home. Uh, don't forget that we, we send remittances over. Uh, in the year 2013, uh, according to the Bank of Ghana, remittances alone constituted about uh, 4.6, if I'm not mistaken, or mm -hmm. 4.7 approximately of, of the GDP. So uh, we feel the pain. Hello, Charles. Yes, hello. Well, you, you, you obviously say you feel the pain, but th then again, take us or run us through uh, some of the issues that you think you want government to address, by which you would want to go on a demonstration. Well, we want government to deliver on the Better Ghana agenda they promised Ghanaian. Uh, we feel that at this point we are not delivering and we don't have to wait for another election cycle to make our voices heard. Mm. Um, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, we, we know people speak big English to obfuscate uh, the issue. Mm. But the issue, if you ask yourself, uh, do I have enough energy? Is there electricity, for instance? People go to sleep and they don't have electricity. Uh, you go, you wake up sweating. When, when you wake up sweating, you expect that at least there will be uh, water for you to, to bathe. But alas, there is no water. It, it, it's becoming bad, and, and we think that government needs to sit up. Mm. And, and these are issues that, that's been raised by a number of Ghanaians here as well. But Talk about you, uh, you know, those of you in the United States of America. You talk about feeling the pinch. What, what pinch really do you feel? Well, most, most of us have businesses back home which are failing uh, due to the uh, economic climate. Uh, we have taxes all over the place. Uh, we have uh, people, are, are people here also have projects back home. For instance, some are building houses and, and real estate. Now, you, 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 make your, you, you make out your budget for a project, and the next time you, you hear it has skyrocketed because the, the, the cost of, for instance, cement is it, it, running, and there is no, we, we don't see anything being done to cause such uh, anomalies. Mm. Now, let's, 
let's talk about what happened yesterday. The finance minister, Honorable Seth Tepe, he was in parliament and he enumerated plans to stabilize the economy. Now, why won't you rather develop a wait and see approach or posturing, you know, in as much as you know, we are waiting for government to roll out its plans? My brother, we, we, have, we have been, we have been uh, waiting for government to do things they have promised since time in Boria. Can you tell me that the issues that face the Ghanaian today are new? No. More road infrastructure is not new. Flooding on the great it's not new. Mm. So there is nothing new under the sun that the issues that face the good people of Ghana mm. are not new. But but, but oh, the, the, the finance minister, for instance, talks about measures to stabilize the economy or stabilize the city for that matter. Uh, deal with that issue of uh, the depreciating nature of the city. He, he has also mentioned ways and means government would want to borrow in order to, uh, as it were, raise revenue to take care of several developmental process, uh, projects in the country. Now, these are processes. These are not one-time events. And so, wouldn't you rather, you know, say that let's wait and see what government can do? Because already government has acknowledged that, indeed, there are challenges. Ask yourself, is this the first time government, I'm not talking about NDC or, or in particular, is it the time? Is it, is it your point that it is the first time that we have been promised something by a politician or politicians? We hear promises all the time. Uh, this, this, are, this are the irregular talking points. Oh, the things are in the pipeline to do so and so. Uh, plants are far ahead to do this and this and that. Well, prove it. From time in memorial, we have had promises, we have had pledges, but we have not seen any real changes in the lives of the average Ghanaian. So yes, he has, he has promised, but we feel that promises and talk alone. We say talk is cheap. Uh, this, the, there is a state here called Missouri, and they are, they are answering it, they are slogan is show me. So show me, not just the mere talk. The talk is cheap. Okay, so you're, you're, you're waiting for uh, some level of work on the ground. but. Exactly what's your anticipated outcome? How, how long are you going to go on with this demonstration? Uh, the demonstration is slated for from uh, 9 a.m. to 12 and noon when we present our petition to the head of the city. Mm -hmm. We understand we don't have a country ambassador. So he is the one we're looking forward to meeting. Uh, already we've met them and, and, and we've made known our our plan, so they'll be waiting for us that day. Mm. Now, the last time we had the Occupy Flagstaff House demonstration, they listed a number of uh, issues they want government to deal with. But one, one particular challenge or one bashing they had was the fact that they n did not enumerate uh, solutions that they think government can, can you know, look out for. In your case, uh, do you have realistic and tangible solutions for government? My brother, Government is being paid to do its job. I'm an attorney. When a client comes to my office and pays me, it is my job to figure out how to solve his legal problem. Mm. Now, we pay taxes to these politicians to figure out how to solve our problem. It is voluntary for, for any person to, 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 to suggest how we, we go forward. But then again, ask yourself, Anything you say in Ghana today is politicized. Every, the, the, the atmosphere is toxic, such that any suggestions you make, uh, depending on which side of the political divide you are, you are branded in a certain direction. Mm. That means you have suggestions then. What are they? Our suggestions are our demands. It is for the government to figure out how to achieve those demands. But, but we're in a state where government is saying that we are working on some of these issues that you're raising. If it's about the economy, you heard the finance minister. He has enumerated have, a number of, uh, you know, structures that they are putting in place to deal with the situation. They're looking at the oil and gas production for that matter. They're looking at borrowing from, from the Chinese uh, Development Bank for that matter to resuscitate the economy, to undergo some projects, to help the economy. Don't, don't you think this government is, is, is doing what it can to deal with the situation at hand at this moment? It is not a matter of what government is doing uh, uh, whether government is doing what it can. It 
it is what it is it is it is about what it must it's not about can it's about must they must do it because that is why they put up they put themselves up for elections in the first place mm. you see it is only in our dear country that we we, we, we hold soccer players or, or footballers to a higher standard than our politicians mm. see my brother structures have been in place they have talked about structures being in place thinking about things to do for a, for a long time now we think it's a time for action and we need them to set up Okay, I want you to hold on the line. Let me just bring in Kojo Anti. Uh, he's one of the organizers of uh, 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 Occupy Flagstaff House uh, demonstration, which took place here in Ghana. Kojo, thank you very much for joining us on today's big story. Now, you heard the finance minister. He has listed uh, solutions to stabilize the economy. He said government is expecting increases in the oil and gas exploration and production, particularly from the Jubilee Field, Sankofa, Jinyami, and uh, Kinebua area there. He also announced the building of a second floating production storage and of loading vessel and ongoing negotiations for gas pricing, you know, to buttress his claims. He has also mentioned that government is also hoping that the construction of gas pipelines and processing plants would be completed to stabilize and improve the supply of energy. You know, the current energy crisis, which uh, was one of the issues that you actually raised. Now, are these not enough steps to let you back down as far as protests are concerned? Well, thank you very much, Prince. Uh, good evening to you. Good evening to Charles on the other side, and then good evening to all your wonderful viewers as well. Now, let me start by saying that uh, the plans that were outlined by the Minister of Finance yes, yesterday, uh, if you take a close look at those plans, indeed, uh, you notice that uh, there was a concentration on oil production, mm -hmm. but uh, we had little or nothing uh, on... on uh, how government plans to cut down on expenditure because we know that government expenditure uh, is part of, of the, the reason why we are where, where we are today, the deep hole that we are in. Uh, government, huge government expenditure is part of the reason. Mm. Uh, we didn't hear anything on that. Uh, again, we did not hear anything on how government plans on increasing uh, revenue collection. We heard little on how government intends to uh, plug some of the holes, in fact, the many holes that uh, we have in uh, revenue collection in this country. Uh, also, we did not hear anything on how government intends to widen the tax net to capture those uh, in the informal sector, because we know that the ordinary Ghanaian uh, who is operating in the formal sector, as we speak, is currently overburdened with taxes. Mm. We didn't hear anything on 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 these these things as though, as though in, invariably you're saying that there's nothing to uh, hold on to to get you to back down on on some of the protests you are already undergoing especially the red friday well my my brother uh what we seek as a group is responsible governance mm -hmm. now responsible governance to us encompasses uh, transparency accountability uh, in, in innovation, mm. uh, it also en encompasses effective communication from government. Mm. So currently what we are saying is that we are not seeing these things uh, from government. Now, if you read the press release that we put out today, you notice that uh, we have requested that government publishes uh, the components that go into the, the pricing mm. of pre premium per letter. Mm. Uh, we want to know what exactly we are paying for uh, the toll recovery levy and all of these things. Let us know what the price breakdown is. Mm. Some transparency will do, so that if we can we can do away with some of those taxes, let's let's do away with them. Uh, you know, we are not saying government should continue to subsidise fuel. Indeed, we against uh, government subsidy of fuel because in the long run it turns around to bite us in the back. So go government should not continue to do that as well, but we are saying that publish what goes into the, the determination of the ex pump price per liter of premium. Mm -hmm. Let us know what component we can do away with for the time being. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, we, are, we are not seeing that. So 
that is one of the demands that we have made we are waiting to okay. hear from government now now let me let me get you to relate to uh, the point that Charles is, is making, for instance, uh, of course, Charles is far away in the United States of America. They're going to demonstrate. They, they're doing, they're actually drumming home the same message you, you've, you've been uh, pointing out there to government. Now, let's look at the signal that is likely to send out there to the international community. Charles, have you considered what harm that can do to our economy as well? It is, uh, we, we don't think, as a group, we don't think it does, it does no harm. Rather, it, 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 it augments accountability and responsibility from, from, from our government. Uh, let me say this. And one of the things we are, we are asking, we are demanding government or leadership to do mm. is to pass the uh, uh, Freedom of Information Act. Mm. Now, you would agree with me that it is not in the best interest of any politician to grant access to the ordinary Ghanaian as to how they use our resources. So I am asking, why haven't they passed that bill? You see, it is like something is grounded in secrecy, and we don't know. Actually, we don't really know what is going on. No, but 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 my point is, my point is, it is obvious. Your actions in the U.S. when you go on a demonstration is likely to raise eyebrows. People, the, the concentration obviously will be on Ghana, uh, whether for the good or for the bad. But have you weighed the other option? The fact that confidence in in in, in the Ghanaian economy is likely to be dotted with some some questions and all that. Uh, my brother, Moody just did a downgrading. Mm of our sovereign racism. Compared to what we are doing, we don't think this is having any negative effect on the country. Mm. The investment climate already has been marred by the way we have mismanaged our economy. Mm. Now, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we should get this straight. We are not going uh, uh, at the embassy, we are not going to the embassy that day to insult anybody. We are not going there to cast in window. All we are going there to do is to drum home the need for transparency, the need for accountability, the need for privacy, the need for government or leadership to be responsible and responsive mm. to the needs of the good people of Ghana. Okay, Charles, I want you to hold on the line again. Uh, let me bring in Kojo now. Kojo, do you support the idea of Ghanaians uh, demonstrating in the U.S.? Well, uh, thank you very much, Prince. Now, as a group, we support any group anywhere in the world that seeks responsible governance from its government. Mm. So if our brothers in the United States are seeking responsible governance from the government of Ghana, because invariably the actions of the government of Ghana affect them where they are, then in, indeed I see no reason why we should not support them. Every well-meaning Ghanaian should support them. But are there no implications? Wouldn't it have any negative implications? I mean, in terms of the brand Ghana, the image well, of Ghana? Thank you very much, Prince. Thank you very much, Prince. I'll say something. You see, we cannot continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Now, the actions and inactions of government has implications in our lives mm. as i speak to you we are feeling the hardship in our pocket we are feeling it in our home the octopus of hardship is following us everywhere we go in this country mm. so what are those implications okay now here's a question to you both and i'll start with you charles uh are we not seeing a trend where we have a couple of middle class gentlemen and women you know, drumming home this particular message, and it has nothing to do with those at the grassroots. Charles? Uh, let me say this. What we are asking government to do does not benefit the middle class alone. It, 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 it bothers on the, the well-being of every Ghanaian, regardless of the, the class in which you fall with regard to social transportation. Uh, if that if, 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 for instance, if petrol is cheap, it affects us all. Mm. If it's expensive, it affects us all. When, when the, 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 the electricity is in the erratic demand, 
uh, sorry, it, 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 electricity is erratic, it affects us all. Mm. So the issues are not different. It's just the mouthpiece. But, but how, how, you, how are you able to tell, Kojo, that those at the grassroots really support what you're doing? Well, thank you very much, Prince. Uh, indeed, we are in touch with those in the grassroots. Uh, indeed, we have already started expanding our network. Uh, our aim ultimately is to give a voice to the voiceless, because if those of us sitting in the capital cities of this country are feeling the pinch this much, how much more our mothers and our fathers and our brothers back in the, in the village. Mm. So indeed, we have been engaging with, with them. And very soon as we roll out the rest of our activities that we have lined up, the campaigns that we have lined up, you would see more involvement uh, on the part of people on the grassroots. Indeed, everything, every big thing has a little big beginning. Mm. This thing might have started with people you may, have, you may describe as uh, belonging to the middle class. Mm. But indeed, it's expanding because if these people are the ones who are feeling the pinch this much, how much more goes in the grassroots? Okay, very well. Thank you very much, Kojoanti. Let me come back to you, uh, Charles, and then finally I can let you go. Then we can bring in uh, Mr. Amachi. He's a political science lecturer to get his own uh, analysis of this particular issue. Now, Charles, back to the issue of uh, the, the grassroots and, and how far you're going to go with this demonstration. I mean, are you picking signals, really, that those are the grassroots? share the same sentiments you do? And how are you able to tell that? Uh, it depends on, uh, on your definition of grassroots. Those who, who uh, wouldn't, those who wouldn't necessarily be on the social media, uh, those who perhaps wouldn't have disposable income like you may have. I know you're a lawyer. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the, the good book says that to whom more has been given, much is expected. Mm. So if my, 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 my brother says that, who are in the so-called lower class cannot speak. I feel that as a, as a, as a, as a citizen of, of, of the beautiful country, Ghana, I owe it to them to voice their concerns out. Um, we do not target the middle class. Our group is open to all. Uh, it is made up of non-professional, professionals and academics. Mm. So our group is open to all. But I'm saying that the concerns are not the prevail of the middle class would affect the lower class and the upper class to speak. Okay. Finally, before I let you go, let's look at the number of days you're going to spend on the streets of Washington, D.C., demanding from the Ghanaian government to be up and doing as far as uh, governance and the economy is concerned. How, how long are you going to be on the streets? A day? Uh, two? We are going to be, we are going to protest from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, we are not going to be on the streets today. Uh, if, if, for, for those who are aware, uh, uh, the United States of America, you, you need to have a really kind of tight schedule mm. for the work and family and demands like that. So we are working within this constraint. Uh, for that matter, we cannot be on the streets for days. Okay. Now, your, your colleagues here in Ghana also did a protest for, for only a day, but they have Red Friday, uh, you know, more of a symbolism to indicate uh, that government needs to do much as far as the economy and, and, and governance is concerned. Now, do you think that is enough to push government to do what you're demanding for? I think uh, for, for some of us who believe in democracy, we have to use legitimate means of, of just make, making our demands known. And I think that what we are doing is in the right direction. We don't want to fail in our country. Uh, what, for, for instance, what my group uh, is, 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 is asking for is not a regime change. We are not asking for, for, for people to impeach, for people to, to resign. We are asking that to do your job. That's all. We pay you to do your job. Okay. Very well. Charles. All right. Charles. Thank you very much, Charles. I'll call a chair. Uh, he's a member of the legal team, uh, uh, and of course they are demonstrating in the United States of America, Washington, D.C., to be precise. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak to Kwasi Amache. Uh, he's a political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Thank you, sir, uh, for joining us here on today's Big Story. You're welcome. Now, does it look like Ghana is seeing increased activism on social media, and uh, the middle class is now agitating? Uh, what, what does that really mean? 
Thank you for the opportunity. Let me say good evening to your listeners. Actually, uh, simply put, in democracies, the first point of call when for people to express their satisfaction or otherwise of the performance of government has got to do with general elections. But in addition to that, activism of this nature, you know, public demonstrations are also open to them. And and what this means is that people or uh, the citizens of Ghana are increasingly becoming assertive. Mm. And, you know, they've gone out, keep going out to demand accountability, you know, from the government of the day. Why? Because there's a growing discontent among many Ghanaians. Essentially, about the sustained increases in the cost of living. Mm. You now, this made manifest essentially with a poor increment over the period. It's astronomical. You know, it's documented that between January 2013 to date, you know, poor increment has gone up up to, you know, um, about 96.72 percent, mm. without the corresponding increases in uh, salaries. But, so but, but, they but, 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 people and, and they will want to go out and at least make this known to the government of the day. Very well. But how does it help government and even Ghana as a whole when it looks as though those who are protesting have taken an entrenched position? I'm saying this because, look, we've had the finance minister enumerate a number of uh, uh, procedures and structures that they are putting in place to resuscitate the Ghana city, city and, 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 and the economy as a whole. Now, when we still have protesters insisting that, look, we want to see some action, we want to see some solution immediately, when we, we can all bear in mind that, of course, development is a process and not a one-time event, how does it help matters, really? Well, actually, um, government has a duty to address itself to uh, fixing the economy and citizens are prepared to cooperate with government when the government demonstrates, you know, its sincerity and its uh, determination, you know, to uh, go out and get this fixed. But then there's uh, this challenge with the governments of Ghana, uh, especially in the Fourth Republic, is being associated with all the governments that have been produced. The size of government, and for that matter, the cost that goes, you know, uh, into uh, the various uh, ministries, and all these add to the wage bill. And you realize that on this front, the government has never demonstrated seriously that it is, you know, um, also committed to meeting, uh, if you like, uh, uh, people halfway by demonstrating, cutting down the size of government. That would be one of, you know, uh, the things to do. In addition to that, um, the Mills administration, Mahama administration, have uh, been hit by various, you know, scandals relate, especially those related to the payment, uh, you know, of money that uh, have come out that, you know, government have no business paying, and 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 come down through to these uh, issues related to Jida, and all these are compounding the issue, and definitely. Um, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned the issue of Jeddah. I mean, you, you already know that some level of investigation is going into this matter. Is that not demonstrative enough to get anyone to say that the government of the day is working? Much more action. The, 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 the investigations people think are not enough. You know, the trust, the level of trust is going down. You know, the confidence that people have in the sincerity of government to really address some of these issues are uh, what we see now. The confidence has gone very, very low. Mm. It, it really, it, it's really a big challenge. I think um, some of these issues have got to go, you know, get to government so that uh, whatever it is that it can put in place to salvage you know, its image mm. you know, should be done. Okay. Because simply put, people are losing confidence. And this is what we see in the streets. In let, let me give you another example. President Mahama, for instance, said in Kumasi that the time for talking is over. Let me quote him. And he said, let's no longer talk about what we intend to do. Let's just do it. That's, that's, that's a quote from President John Mahama. Now, is that not the demonstration you're looking for? It, it, it's something being done. What exactly is being done? You know, um, the 
policies that are coming only go to take money. To take money from Ghanaians. You don't see uh, policies that are working to improve the economy, to strengthen the economy, to bring in jobs. But, but there's an admission. If you listen to a statement, there's an admission that perhaps something went wrong and, and we need to change our strategy. Well, let's look at it this way. Mm. At least the NDC government has been in office from 2009 to date. Now, in, in, in this second term, um, uh, I think two years are, are, are already over, and then they are in the third year of the fourth, you know, the fourth and then the final leg of, of, of the government's term in office. Mm. So you realize that uh, people who are out now possibly are saying that, look, Whatever it is that the government could put in place, they might have, you know, come out with. So, um, you, you, you don't just come and tell people that, look, uh, let's stop talking and see action. And, and your own policies that are supposed to stimulate the uh, economy are also not seen as attractive. Various uh, commentaries that have been made of the uh, government uh, policies of late all point to the fact that, you know, they, are, they don't go far enough to address the challenges in place. People think that the taxes itself are getting negative and that they are not going to stimulate the economy. Very well. The speak is going down. So all these things are compounding and in addition to the poor increments, mm. we continue to go up. Very well. And they see these as, if you like, the output of government and Very they are not positive ones. Very well. So and, and I bet this discussion will go on, but that's all time will allow us for. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Machabwatin for talking to us here on today's big story. Well, that'll be it for now, but shortly on your screen, of course, uh, Jenny Interactive with Marianne Ture. Stay tuned.